Okay, we're back at it here, and in this video we're going to go look at some, uh, what would you call it, uh, repository maintenance version control stuff. I'm going to start off first with uh, just a homespun database code base to show me everything that I have got in a particular set of directories. And another video I'll go into Git and GitLab in particular and get things automated to there. But for this one, we're going to go over and um, create our homespun uh, code base repository. As you all, or maybe you don't know, everything I've got is stored in this root scripts Python. There's a root scripts SQL Server. It'd be really nice to be able to put this in something that uh, I could look and search a lot easier than using the control find or whatever tools we want to get to get the information that's that's in, in here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy out, um, copy and paste into the, the desktop from my other computer, uh, something I called code base. I'm just going to extract that here. Extract, sure, go ahead. It's up there, right there. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to put it in. Well, let's just call it code base for right now or repo stuff. Yeah, let's just say code base repository stuff. And let's say code base. Code base. And I'm just going to copy the stuff I have been using elsewhere. This guy, that guy, this guy, and copy that over there, copy, and we'll walk through this stuff together. Uh, the first thing we want to do is create a database. Um, I think I've got that in DDL. Let's just open you. This is just sort of to find things that I can go and create my own database. I'm going to be in master, I think. Create a new query. Um, boom. I think I could just run this. It'll create a database called CB. Right there. It's going to create a somewhere down here. It's going to create a schema called code base. And it's going to create a table called files and a table called code lines. So I should be able just to run this right off the bat. It says it's successfully completed. Go up to databases, right click and refresh. And I got a CB right there. And I should have, I said, what? Security. Um, users, schemas, right? Schemas, code base, good. And in this guy, I have two tables, one called files and one called code lines. At this point, I'm going to close this. No, don't save that. And code base files is just going to be a list of all the files. Oh my God, what happened here? Broken, not possible. Oh, welcome, welcome, warrior. Uh, SQL. Server. I'm going to close that while that opens. Maybe I should just hit refresh to be in tester. Yes, please log on. Please be there. I saw you guys there. You should be able to go code base, tables. There we are. Nothing in it. But I'm going to get the host name from when this is run, the sample date, which is pulled, the file name, file path, complete path, which is going to be the entire. Oh, no. Great. Another update is installed now. Uh, Create date of the file, update, if it's current or not. We'll talk about that when we get there. A hash and the old hash and the extension. For each one of these guys, I'm going to create, uh, basically, scrape in uh, the line for each part of the text file. That's code. Uh, by run date will be the date, modified date, the line number, the line length, and if it's current or not. Nothing in there yet, so we'll come back to this in a minute. The way this is going to run, it's going to... Well, let's just open this first. Why not, right? Open utilities. No, should be code base somewhere. Repo stuff. Code base. Nothing in there. No Python. Did I just not put that in there? Oh, look, I called it code base scratch. User says desktop scripts. Python. Repo stuff. Oh, it's right there in code base. Sorry, I thought I put it in code base. Let's make this in there so that we're nice and. Did I copy that or? I must have. Oh, I'll delete that. 
Sorry? <laughs> Do this again. Code base. Repo stuff. Code base. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be the script, strip or strip. The script we're going to run here. The script is going to go through and it's going to be beholden to a config file, which we can find here in config, which I'll just open in text right now. Good. And what we're going to look here, this is going to direct the code to do what we want to do. I'm going to get a database connection string here. Tester is my uh, VM. It's CB is the database I do. I'm using a trusted. don't know what driver this is on here, so we'll go through that in a minute. We'll pick, pick it up off the fly, just to make sure we get that appropriate. Number of processes, where we will have multi-processing going when we look at the files, because there can be quite a few of them. So 10 processes at once, and they're going to have a timeout of 20 seconds. Uh, scan locations will be the places I want this guy to scan for um, files, basically. So I'm going to do Python and SQL Server now. It's not limited to a Windows box. I could do a UNC path or a server name or anything. Letters fine is what I'm saying. Patterns. So the patterns here are going to be Pi, SQL Server, VBS, and PS1, which are the uh, extensions in this case that we're going to want to look at. Uh, we have File SQL, which I'm not going to use. Code SQL, which I will probably not use either. Um, the various SQL stuff that we'll, we'll talk about this in the script, but in the insert. So Basically, this script is going to go read this over here and use it as that's um, uh, what will you call it? It's a configuration file. I'll just put a breakpoint up at the top here. So going over the script really quickly. Standard library sys state time, the hash stuff uh, socket to get the, the system name copy the do copy multiprocessing um, OS for. We're going to be uh, recursing through some some directories. Environment to read the config. It's my own thing. Small DB utilities is going to get a SQL Server driver. Select data and update data to the database. Structures will be my um, return dictionary. And then my multitasking utilities template, which will use the spawner that will come through um, and get this, this data. I don't know what I just did there. Anyway, I think it would be better just to start walking through the script here. I'm going to hit the go button. And what this is going to do is, well, since we're using multiprocessing, we're going to need to clearly states in the documentation to freeze support. So in case we compile this, we make sure that the gill is locked, I guess. Um, we are going to need uh, an argument here in the command line. It didn't have one, so it's going to exit. Okay, good. So let's do this again. I'm going to say my um, config files and config one thing up config. I spell it right. Config code base dbx for. Spell that right. Dot cfg. C, G. Okay. And now if I step through this, step through that, I do have the right number of um, command line arguments. And I'm going to send argv in the first place, in the first position, or the second position, I guess, to this thing called get script config. And it's pretty simple. It's just going to read my config from the file system, which it just did. It's going to see if it returned to false. It didn't. I'm going to put the payload in there. You get the ODBC driver. If it's not, if no, ODBC driver, not much we can do. Uh, we're going to come back and tell it which ODBC driver to do and return the config. Uh, for the curious, the config file looks pretty much like that text file we just saw. Except you can see it's all here in one line. Boom. I guess I could, we could print this out, but the, Point here is I wanted to put that guy in there, the ODBC driver itself. So we're going to step out of this, and then we're ready to go. It's got all the config it needs to go. I'm going to create a files uh, list that's empty, and for each one of the file locations and scan locations, as you recall, there's two of them, this guy and that guy. We're going to go do that. File temp, I know it kind of sucks. The way this is going to work is I'm going to 
pass it a, a, a list by reference. And the recursive nature of this thing is going to go through and build up that file list. And then I know when it comes out, that's going to have the values I want into it. So I'm going to append the values for each one of these scan locations into this master list called files. So stepping quickly through this, we're going to go off and we're going to do a try on the OS directory. I might not have permissions, so there's a capture there to make sure I try accept to make sure everything is fine. As I see, I'm just returning false, which is not very descriptive. Maybe I'll print something there later. But right now I've got a list of um, elements in the directory I'm looking at. And what I'm looking at is the file path right there. I'm asking it to go look at that first one that we saw in the config file. I'm going to say, look for these patterns. Uh, extension pattern means I'm only going to do the equivalency on the extension and not, uh, you know, is in the, the, you know, a pattern inside the file, which we could also do. And there's that pass by reference again, that's going to hold our files. So the first thing I want to do is take that list that pulled everything out, namely this stuff and see what the, um, directories are versus the, um, the actual files. I'll hit F6 to get out. So the directory list at this point, and I'll show you this right here, shows you the directory list, right? Now there's all the directories. Um, then I'm going to say, well, let's make a make the file list look like the files that we want to look at. So I'm going to say if, if I'm only looking at the extension, which I am, I'm going to look split out the the um, the file name and the extension and just see if the extensions in the pattern list do that I should get a file list I don't have anything in this first um, directory so there's nothing in here so I'm just gonna come over through there and I'll just step through it but um so right now I have two lists I have a list of files and a list of directories since I know the list of directories I'm gonna recurse into that and ask it the same thing keeping the other data in the list you know, if it's really big, you might have some memory problems, but we're not worried about that right now. Let's go in here and uh, just run this same recursive call again. In fact, step right into it. Uh, of course, I have to do that. Uh, I'll just go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, it went back into this guy and it's back at this file list. Now there should be some actual files in the file path. And the file path is the ask command, which I don't know if I've posted any videos on YouTube yet, but we do have them, um, which is a Slack uh, chatbot thing. We'll get back to that later. I'm going to step over that, and it's going to do how many? It's going to do a lot of them. Let's go down to you right here. All right, so the file list now that we want to look at looks like this. There's two files in there that we are interested in that match the pattern of, again, where are we? Patterns, pi.sql.pbs.ps. You can do whatever you want in there, obviously. Um, let's skip over this and let's let it recurse through and we'll go for each file in the file list. So that should pop up down there. And let's see if we have the same file list at this point because we could have recursed. No, we, have, we went into another directory, but that's okay. It'll pop out and be all good at the end. And for every file in this file list, I'm going to create a complete path, which will pop up there. That's the cooling path. I'm going to create the ta create time and modification time of the file so we can see what's going on. Now we're going to get a hash. We're using, um, what are we using? Uh, the SHA224 for some reason. Maybe that's the one I wanted. I don't have to look at my notes from way back. That's why I picked that one versus another one, but that's okay. So we have the hash. And we're going to use the hash to determine if something changes at the file level. So we'll know when to trigger uh, a scan of the actual uh, pull of the, the, the actual file we're going to look at. And we're just going to put this in a dictionary called files. Boom. And it's done, right? So that's just pretty much it for the uh, recursive part. I'm going to take these breakpoints off that I put on here. I think I took them off. And I'm going to just wait till it to come out of the... Uh, the recursive run here down here at uh, where are you there 
So it's going to go loop for each one of those. So we'll do one for SQL and then one for, um, well, let's just do this. You know, boom. And now the next uh, location will be, I'll just put it there in the pop-up SQL server. And we'll do boom again. And then the last one won't go because it's done. At this point, I have a list of files, which I can come over here and show you because it's so interesting. I'll pop about 30 of them. Um, I don't know. Let's... Yeah, let's do that one. Uh, 40. Okay, there's 40 of them. Um, all with the the metadata right there that we're going to put into that SQL server here in this next step, which is run to code base. And remember, code base has first lines, nothing in it yet, and then the line, the, the files, and then the lines of each one of these files. We'll look at that as that comes up here. So we're excited to see what happens here. I'm going to step into this guy, um, F7, get a start date for this, get my host name. Oh, good. I know what the host name is. And the first thing I'm going to do is update files to DB. So I have these files, which I passed as here's the config we did from the from that text file, tech, and then the files we, we just uh, pulled off from the system. So this guy is going to say update this to if not update that. So if I go into this function, which is called where we update files to DB. Right, I'm going to step into that, update files to DB. That's going to go off and create a value table. Um, yeah, let's hit F6. It's stuck. What's it not working for? Oh, because I'm iterating through here. Let's just go to here. Okay. So right now we've got um, a value table that's just basically building a SQL server table on the fly. Um, and it's going to create this guy right there, which will be the SQL statement that we're going to put in. And let's just go look at that for a second. I'll say print. Take a little side tour here. So what that did is we're building kind of on the fly this SQL statement here. And I just wanted to show you what the value table is doing. I'm not going to run this part right there. Let's get rid of that. But I should be able to take this part and let's go. That's a shift one. I didn't get to the end to everybody. There, let me show you that. Yeah. If I run this, it should just produce. Watch it not do. Oh, there we go. Uh, in ta tabular form, the, the files that we just pulled up. This is going to be important because now I can now make a sim simple SQL statement with this thing called new insert, which is going to say, hey, take my value table and insert things into the, the, the code base that files record where the complete path is null. So I'm left joining n, which is n for new, from here that isn't already in the code base. So I can make one simple uh, SQL statement. I like this, this, this value table stuff. It's, you know, obviously you can get it really big because there's only 40 rows, but you got a big server, so lots of memory. Memory's cheap. <laughs> anyway, uh, coming back over here. So I'm going to run this guy. And just to show you again that there's nothing in files right now. But if I run it again, run the next step over here, boom. And if it doesn't return an error, which it didn't, this should have fields in it right now. Boom. So there it is in my permanent persistent table called codebase.files over here. All the stuff that's pertinent for um, what's in my repository. So I have a hash here, null. So the null versus that, we'll look to see what's different between this old hash and this hash. If they're different from each scrape, then it triggers it to go pull more data from uh, the, the, the OS. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to get a list of things that have changed, and it should be exactly the same because they all null. And again, update hash SQL. Update hash SQL says where complete path equals there, right? So I'm updating the hash. Update hash equal. Boom. True. 
And I come out of here and I'm done with that bit of uh, running. So I'm now in the run of the code base, or no, I just did that function. I'm gonna go pick up the changed SQL stuff, which is changed, I said SQL file. Um, and where are you? Change file SQL. Change. Anybody see it right there? And this this is where the um, where hash or the, yeah you have to find it on the host name where the hash doesn't equal old hash or the old hash is null. This will tell me how many records I need to insert into um, the code lines. Now the code lines clearly don't have anything in them yet, and we should have forty odd records here to go pull. So if I say, okay, I'll see, come over, and I'll say this length of result should be 40. When result 40. So I has 40 things I'm gonna go through and basically pull from the file system. Okay, so here's where it gets kind of fun. So uh, I'm gonna build this parameter list I'll just let this go to here. And then I'm going to spawn out each one of these things in terms of how many um, processes I told it to have, which is 10. We're going to time out in 60 seconds, and they're going to put the stuff into the, the database running this uh, get and post command line, or function, sorry. And we'll just look at that. It's going to be multi-process, so we're not going to necessarily see it. But I'm going to make a copy of the return code. Here's the payload. Just make sure it's empty. Um, get my lines from code. So let's look at that. What's pretty simple stuff. Get my lines. It's all it's going to do is open up the file. And it's going to, for each line, make sure there's a string. And put it in the payload of the result and return that result. So basically, we're going to get the code from the, that text file. It's going to check to make sure everything is fine. It's going to update the result to, well, it's going to set the current. So we have this concept here we go, talk about current. If it's current or not, if, if it's one, that means it's the last run of the thing. If it's zero, that means that the run date, it looked like that, but it's not the most current version. So you get kind of this history of, of what went on as changes happened to these um, um, pieces of data in the in the code or the T-SQL or whatever it is you're pulling in. Where are we now? So we're gonna go and just append everything here to code list append till we get to the bottom and then we're going to insert the code SQL, which is again from here, it's insert into the code base, all the stuff current, and then the values that are there. Pretty simple stuff. It's going to go and swip swap or flip flop or whatever you want to call it, the old hash with a new hash. So basically that's going to say swap old hash is just going to say uh, turn old hash and new hash. So they're then, then equivalent, so they're good enough for the next run. And at the end, it's going to give out a result. And this is all going to be multi-processed. And the multi-processor is going to take them in batch of 10, run them, and then scan them for, scan the processes for completion and time it out. If not, at the end, we'll, we'll go and say, well, these aired out. Maybe they timed out. We'll see some of the stuff pop up in, in the debug window when, it's, when it airs out or, or completes. But it'll do it in batches of 10 and just cycle through that each time. And then we'll look for the actual, on this guy, the... Um, the actual, uh, how do you say it, uh, of the function module itself returned an error. So you have the, the error from the spawner, and then you have the error from the um, the, the call. So I'm just going to step over this right there, and here we got 10 seconds, and now it's going all this stuff in parallel, and it's done. So it's gone through this whole stuff. It's picked, you know, 10 at a time, so there's 40. So what, there's four, four different uh, batches that basically went. And I can come over here, and if I did this right, I can see here's my code lines, one, two, three, four, five. Right, and I can come over and link those together with, oops, sorry, this. And I can say, what do you look like? Uh, general utilities, one, two, three, four, five, right? Da, da, da. And if I scroll down far enough, there should be, oh, we have it. Why is it only 123? Oh, that's because I have the name right here. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> Need that extra parenthesis. And there, we have all the 3,000 lines of code that represent these 40.
pieces of um, uh, scripts or key sequels or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's out of there right now. So let's just step over this. Print any errors? No, no. I don't think there are any errors. Okay, so not there, right? Boom, great. Boom, come out of there, return, done. So that's done. So now I can come over and say, oh, I want to see, you know, uh, where, let's do this so wine like. I don't know. I'm gonna fly ODBC just for giggles. I don't know how many there are in there, so let's click that. And you have the word ODBC in all these lines. 47 lines of the word ODBC everywhere. Pretty helpful, pretty fast when it's in SQL Server. Um, let's get rid of this for right now. And we just want to do one more test. So everything's in the system right now on the initial run. But if I come over and let's let's go change something. Um, go to base. Nope. Come back. Google stuff. Probably shouldn't go and change my utilities with, just on the fly. But I think there's a comment in here I can see the test. I'll say test the test one two three, and save that. That should now prompt for a different hash. And if I run this guy again, let's finish that out. I'm run you again. Go. How many? I'm having problems with the buttons. I should just say clear all breakpoints, but I'm too lazy for that. Go. Go. <laughs> Come on. How many? How many did we put in there? You can see that one. Done. Okay. So it only pulled up one. This time it's only found one change, which is what we're expecting. And if I come over to the, um, put that general utilities back in there. And let's go. It was line five, right? So if I come over and say, where L dot line number equals five. I should have two entries there. Test the test, test the test one, two, three. And for giggles, because I like to say the word giggles, um, L dot current. One should be current and one should not be current. Hey, right, what did I do wrong? Oh, I need a comma. Always full of errors there. Yeah, so the older one here, the newer one. And did I get this backwards? No, no, I didn't. This is <laughs> yesterday and this is today. Old one's that one, this one. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, we have now demonstrated that we have a code base here that we could put this on a schedule and runs things in so we can find things. I mean, sometimes I'm looking for a string that I kind of remember typing a long time ago and this this will have all the stuff in next video will be on um, git and a, and a git repository where we'll take all the stuff and put it on an online repository and make it automatic so we can uh, publish and see things from wherever we are there you can also look at changes and stuff to that but i find this to be pretty easy anyway that's it for this video and um, talk to you later